talking point of the current meta in general, never mind just salty potatoes anymore. Yeah, and I mean, Mouse Sports banning away the Kroll instead of the Black Feather. This has got to make Salty Potatoes feel really good to be able to get this hero yeah. pick for themselves because even before, like you mentioned, even before Black Feather was one of the strongest picks on this current update, they were picking up this Black Feather just about every game regardless. So uh, it's definitely a comfort pick for the team and it's a current meta pick. Right, and they weren't able to get it yesterday in the match against Calamity Reborn today, they're able to get their hands on it. So we're going to be able to see how well they've practiced it and how well Sneaky can perform on it if he's able to carry his team with that strong pick that usually can do so much in the late game especially. Now it's very interesting that Mouse Sports favoring this Grace over the likes of Lyra and Arden. They've typically been the two captains we've seen the most of on this update, but Mouse Sports Feeling confident with that Grace pick regardless. Yeah, well, for Mouse Sports, it's a pick that they're comfortable running as a carry. They ran it as a carry last week. Uh, we could very well see them doing it again because of the fact that they didn't ban away one of these captains. It makes you feel like they're going to be taking up one on their rotation, uh, either the Arden or the Lyra. And it's actually going to be the Catherine instead. So this is very similar to what they ran. They, they ran the Catherine and the Grace last week. Obviously, Grace has the weapon power carry, so Salty Potato should have a very strong idea of what they're going to be up against now. Yeah, when you see the double captain locked in, you assume that that Grace is going to be going weapon power. And we saw that Mouse Sports, you know, I actually tweeted about this, kind of mocking the weapon power Grace pick, and then it annihilated the game that they played in. It kind of had to rescind my statement. So very much uh, excited to see what Mouse Sports can do with this pick, if it's going to be a consistently good pick for them, or if Salty Potatoes will have an answer. I mean, they could have an answer. They're going for the Batiste here, and that could be a reason for why Mouse Sports chose to go with the Catherine instead of the Arden or the Lyra. Had they not taken that, it could have been a Batiste-Catherine composition with the Black Feather. We've seen it multiple times so far this week, and it works really, really well just because of the synergy it has between all three heroes on the, on the team. So the Catherine pick, I think it was more of a takeaway. Now Salty Potatoes decide to go with the Lyra over the Black Feather. I actually like the Lyra here instead of the Black Feather just because of the bulwark stopping the initiation coming from Grace if placed correctly and timed correctly. With the Batiste also, that's a lot of sustain that comes out in general. And as a Grace, you're not able to pick up a Poison Shift. All three members of Salty Potatoes have a lot of sustain. The Poison Shift can come from a Grace. And Ozo coming out means that this is going to be a really interesting matchup now because obviously Ozo getting the heals from the Grace, mm -hmm. even though it's likely to be the weapon power Grace, the heals aren't going to be quite as strong, but it's going on to an Ozo who receives right. more healing in general. But I want to see this Lyra. We saw Lyra versus Ozo before yep. where the Lyra ended up going with the Echo and echoing the Bulwark so that Ozo was just kind of shut down completely in that area. So I would be curious to see if that is something that Salty Potatoes will look to go for. It yeah. also shuts down the Benediction, which when it's Weapon Power Grace, it's a large portion of the damage that she can offer. Who are we expecting to be aggressive in the early game? Because it feels like this mouse composition wants to be aggressive the whole game. Yeah, I mean, the mouse composition wants to be aggressive throughout the early and mid game, especially because they need to get ahead to be able to snowball the game. If it goes to the very late game without them being ahead, I expect the Blackfoot and the Batiste to be able to come out on top in team fights. However, the Ozo versus the Batiste, that's a matchup that can go either way just because of how both of them can be out duel one another yeah i especially expect the early aggression from mouse because of the burst that okay. they have all right we'll see if that burst is going to be enough for them to take this first one in the series hashtag vainglory let us know who you think is going to take this first semi-final of the day but it's time to get on into this one and pass it over to our casters for game number one La la, salty potatoes versus mouse sports to kick the day off. And Sean Ostino, we've got some fun drafts on our hands. Begun. We do have some fun drafts, human, humanist. We have. Uh, <laughs> we, shorten we, it up. <laughs> I was gonna say humanisto. No, hey. but uh, we we we've got sneaky here on this black feather, Joker on Batiste, and we've got uh, classed on this Lyra. Lyra, she's gonna have to be locking up. Ozo and uh, Grace a lot. That bulwark is going to be so important once she hits that level 2 power spike. She's going to be able to uh, 
to really prevent a lot of the dive potential that uh, Mouse Sports has. But uh, I don't know. Uh, Leon is so deadly and dangerous on this Grace. We don't get to see weapon power Grace very often. But uh, when we do, we you know we expect her to build like uh, Tension Bow, Sorrow Blade, Double Tyrant's Monocle. They get a lot of damage output and a mm. lot of burst damage coming yeah. out from, from her, especially with those Benedictions. But that's the thing. With the Bulwark that Lyra has, if she throws that up at just the right time, she can prevent those Benedictions from getting in on Salty Potatoes. But what happens if she doesn't throw it at just the right time? <laughs> Well, if she doesn't throw it at just the right time, then the Benedictions are going to come in. We're going to see a lot of damage reduction from the Holy Shields as well. And uh, that's going to really help out uh, Mouse Sports. And, you know, between these two teams here, they could be... They're they really fighting for points now, uh, especially this being uh, the, the last day of this weekend. It's uh, There's a lot of points up for grabs, Humanist. Yeah, definitely. I, I felt kind of bad to see SK go down yesterday, but at the same time, there's so much drama now in Europe. It's definitely uh, fun to watch. Leon on this weapon, Grace. It's a delicious thing. And uh, I, I'm just kind of curious as like why he picks it up. I mean, it feels like Blackfeather can kind of deal with the Graces. Like, what she brings, she's going to fight in this small area of effect. She's got that Holy Nova. I mean, what, what does it make you think of? Well, I would think the the inter oh, we oh, have a whole Nova. They can gauge up in those flames. You're caught out, Leon. Is he gonna go down? Yes, he will. You're pretty tanky, but that's you're gonna first blood to salty potatoes. Yeah, first blood to salty. So, getting back to that interaction, it could very well be that uh, we do have Blackfeather being very strong here in 2.9.1, and he has a lot of execute damage despite his nerfs. You know that execute damage is still a percentage of life that's missing. And he's able to jump in and do, do his, his Rose Offensive, get past the front line. Here we have, see, the interesting thing is here, here we do have Mouse Sports actually wants to go all in. So there's not, it's it's just all front line. There's not really a back line so much. But um, it's all with, front line, okay. It, like it's, it. all, it's all front line, yeah. So Sneaky, uh, with him, he has a lot of damage with this Black Feather. So if we're able to get some any kind of damage reduction, from this Leon, it's going to be coming out of that holy shield. So it's worth noting, Sean, I don't even know if you were watching, uh, casting back then. Um, I'm the Doom was one of the first legit Ozo players, and this is when Ozo was not meta. So I'm very excited to see what he can do here. A uh, little bit of trading happening in the jungle, acro bouncing around, Joker taking a bit of damage. Uh oh, Doom's rooted up there. Ew, Treant going off. It's the healing flask. Who's going to get it? Joker able to get the other Treant. Stun comes in from Just Man to peel for Doom. Doom can turn and start to acro bounce. Class is actually kind of low. I'm surprised that he's not going for it. There you go. Oh, oh but he stunned up right to bounce. That's not what you wanted. He goes down. Just Man can only watch and pour. Get another uh, stack on that captain of the guard as he just stuns up, maybe looking to steal one of these uh, back camps that are currently being taken away. He won't get any, and this is a disaster early for Mouse. A turret going down up in the lane, oh. are you kidding me? Leon not able to defend his sneak, he takes it down. Now Just Man dropping huge damage from the Batiste coming through. Leon may go down as well, yes he will. That goes over to Blackfeather. Salty Potatoes are on a tear here. Unbelievable action for like the last minute and a half. On a tear, Sneaky is sitting with two kills now, just doing so much work on this Black Feather. And not to mention, we have two assists on the Joker on this Batiste. He actually has uh, one kill for himself as well. And we're sitting here at 2,000, well, about 1.2 thousand gold in the lead for uh, for Sneaky Potatoes. And it's looking wow. really good. This is not what I would have expected here. Ten stacks for Captain of the Guard on Just Man, though. Um, it, that's that's pretty good. About two stacks per minute here for him. If he continues to do that, he could get this captain really tanky. And I feel like late game, that's where Mouse Sports is going to be making much more of an impact. <laughs> They're going to have to do something. A lot of pressure coming in from the potatoes right now. And uh, we'll see how it's going to work out. Now level 6 on the Ozo has the Bangarang. Uh, has failed to achieve anything really thus far into the game. He has the aftershock complete though. That's another power spike we'll be looking for. Up in the lane though, the Joker's made his rotation. There's a scout trap, they know what's going on, but Leon dropping low one more time. Sneaky's gonna be able to take him. Rose offensive forward, takes it. Takes a turret shot for his trouble, but he'll be happy to do so. And now it's just time the Doom gonna maybe try to hold the lane. Salty Potatoes, this is their game.
Yeah, this is their game, and I feel like they know that uh, Leon is actually who they need to shut down right now. If Leon just gets too powerful, is able to pick up too many of those tier three items, that's where uh, this race is going to really maybe make it, an impact. Maybe maybe oh, the perfect right forward. He called it. The benediction was stopped off. Oh, so stunned up. Healing flask and acro bounce. He'll stay alive. Just man holding the fountain through this. Leon up here. Just man taking a lot of damage with the turret. Probably going to go down through this engagement. It would feel like Snakey Rose offensive over the top side. Leon trying to do damage, but just with the poison chip, cannot handle the pressure. The ordained is out. Uh, I thought it would be crazy if salty potatoes hang around. They're out of here. Yeah, they they only took a little bit of damage actually, but they just have so much sustain. Look at Sneaky. He's getting healed up by Lyra right now. Class doing so much work, low on energy, but able to just continuously use those Imperial systems. Mid Another game. Ordained. Holy Nova catches two. An opportunity. Acro bounce one, two, three. Class big burst damage. They take down the Joker. Now Bang Rang on to Class. He'll get knocked back. He's surrounded by a whole swarm of mice. And Acro bounce just uh, for flavor points right there. Mouse Sports, they find a fight. They find a fight, finally. Two to four now for Mouse Sports, but they lost two turrets in the process very early in the game. We have uh, about, we're about six minutes, 50 seconds in here, and two turrets down. Uh, this is a lot of map control that Mouse Sports is actually losing at the moment. We have some tier three items for them. We've hit, we've had them hit some power spikes. We have the divine intervention out. And there's a little bit of engage here. Sneaky, dropping pretty low, but that's the combo. You're gonna wait for cooldowns on the Ozo, but Leon jumps in. Rifle work down just in case they wanted to jump underneath that turret there. Oh, a, a deep jump by Doom. Bold moves, but Joker's here. Ordain comes through, Divine Intervention keeps Ozo alive. 616 uh, healing coming through. Doom dropping low, can he stay alive? No, he can't. Now, Mouse Sports on, uh, on the run out of here. Justman loops back around under Leon, and I don't know what's going on. It's like he ran right back into the salty potatoes. Potatoes happy to take the ace here. Humanist, I feel like we could be having a sub 15 minute game here with the amount of pressure that Salty Potatoes is applying. It's just absurd. Now they're going to be working on this gold miner. But uh, that's the thing with Grace, and I've played a lot of Grace. Uh, she is, you know, as a captain, she's great at staying in the reducing damage, uh, doing healing with that divine intervention. But if she a is forced to heal, every, that's a few seconds that she has to channel and put the heal on somebody, and then she has to get back in the fight and do damage. That really reduces her damage output when she's a weapon power grace. Hmm. I guess you can't apply poison shiv while you're using divine intervention either, huh? Yeah, very true. Very true. <laughs> sneaky. <laughs> level 8 sneaky. Descends upon Leon. Just look at he just destroys his health bar right now. Class Joker sneaky, taking things at will across the map. They'll drop down into the jungle. Well, they'll have a little Scooby snack. The Crystal Sentry just easily Crystal goes Sentry down, defeated. undefended. Undefended. We do see that Sorrow Blade actually being picked up by Leon. So that's another power spike for him. But look at this, Salty Potatoes, getting so sneaky with Sneaky in the bush. <laughs> They're they, very they, sneaky. They're just Did you know this is his there. name? He plays up to He's gonna move up. Oh, he got the Ozo run, not the Ozo. Oh no! Why would you do this, salty potatoes? I was your big fan. Arcane passage. Oh, looks like they were trying to grab more, but Joker got sucked back through the arcane passage. Just man, to block off the stun as he moves back to the choke point turret here. Salty potatoes. They have mouth absolutely cornered. They have them absolutely cornered. This choke point turret is going to be going down very, very shortly with... Oh, well, it looks like Leon they might be the backing off. Blast Trimmer comes through as well. Sneaky dropping kind of low. The fountain will come out now. Can Salty Potatoes make a stand? The Fearsome Shade cancels it off. They're going to lose Leon immediately in the beginning of the fight. Doom, can you make can you make a status god like one verse three play? I don't think so. Yeah, He's yeah. no status. Doom goes down. And it is Salty Potatoes 10 to 2, nine and a half minutes into this one. Plus a crystal century on delivery. They got a free delivery on this one. <laughs> yeah, he just carried that pizza. They were so hungry for it. Don't they took tip him the out. driver. <laughs> yeah, don't tip the driver. But uh, yeah, Joker threw out a really good fearsome shade right there. And that actually allowed Leon to get ran into the wall, trapped 
and scared. They were able to take him out so, so easily. And it was just this, it, this game is just becoming a snowball disaster for Mouse Esports. Salty Potatoes really taking it to them. Look at the power spikes across the board. We have a lot of tier three items for Salty Potatoes. Crucible, Fountain, of course, working towards that war no. threats to increase no. the engage. Another sneaky no. move. <laughs> Another sneaky engage. But nice and bright bulwark allows no movement through this. Joker dropping low. He's using the reap to sustain himself. Bang Rang blocked off and Leon chopped down. I'm the Doom. Looks like he'll go down next. He is the focus by Sneaky. The three ring circus will keep him alive for now, but a double kill will eventually come through here for Sneaky. Just man moving towards the wrong side of the map, being basically sheepdog herded across the map by the Joker, the Scarecrow. There's so much fear here. The Sneaky will just continue to push the lane. Actually, Sneaky, he gets another free Crystal Century pizza delivery. <laughs> He does, but look, Just Man still being hunted over there. Dentry's Just eliminated. Man playing with their food here. Oh, Just Man goes in and just takes the kill. One verse two. Now the Ozo's here. Do your work, Ozo. If you had an opportunity, oh, you don't lose this fight, Doom. You better not yeah. lose this fight. He gets the kill. Don't die to that tree, and I swear, Doom makes the play. That's a, a nice bit of comeback gold there. Um, Our mouse back. Hey, I don't know if they're back, Humanist, but we do have finally one death on Sneaky there. He was sitting at 10 and 0 and 2, doing so much work on this Black Feather. And I, I feel like it, he's just going to continue to aggress Mouse Sports in this game. They really need to be able to focus him just like that. I'm so glad that I'm the Doom came out in that 1v1 situation. We do see uh, CP and Fusion being picked up by Class. Uh, that's going to allow us for some really good cooldown reduction and some uh, additional uh, CP power on those uh, those attacks there from the uh, principal Arcanums. But, um, yeah, just so much work uh, that uh, Salty Potatoes is throwing in here. We've got Shatter Glass, Clockwork down for the Joker. We've got uh, po Bonesaw actually comes out for Sneaky. He's going to be able to really chunk down armor, but we don't see that much armor, so it's going to be making a huge impact in these uh, in, in the rest of this game. Gold Miner going to be going over to Salty Potatoes, uncontested. Immense gold uncontested? 400 gold each. These are very rich <laughs> players right now. Sneaky, feeling good about this game. And Mouse, I they, they need some hero plays. They need some hero plays. Look at Leon. He actually has a breaking point that he's just picked up. I'm really concerned about this, Humanist, because we if he is going to be dealing damage, yeah, that's going to be great. But we know that Grace also needs to have some sustain for the rest of her team. She needs to throw those Divine Interventions down. If she is not attacking, she's going to be losing stacks of her breaking point, and that's just going to be making her a mute point during these team fights. So sh they need to be able to be really careful and balance doing those divine interventions with the damage output coming out of Leon. Yeah, I am confused. As well, Leon seems to be getting just absolutely burst down in these fights. And obviously breaking point, uh, an item you're gonna pick up in a fight that you think you're sustaining through, doesn't really make sense. No, it, do me. it doesn't really yeah. make sense. Looks like we're yeah. gonna be backporting here. And oh, it feels like we we've can reached... talk with, uh, I'm sure Iraqi and Bacon will be able to break it down for us later after this game. And we'll see. Maybe they're on the same page. Maybe not. Right now, salt, salt, salty potatoes moving down the lane, just kind of pinning Mouse down once again, of which they're going to drop into the jungle and just choke them out. They take everything across the map. All resources on the map currently belong to salty potatoes. You're only getting this trickle gold right now going the way of Mouse. And it's a tough situation to be in. Salty Potatoes even looking, they're like, you want to you wanna just move out anywhere onto the map, we will kill you. They have them pinned down, actually. Look at this, it's almost a 10,000 gold lead in favor of Salty Potatoes. They're really not able to do that much. You just They just get that ambient gold, uh, the, or the passive gold that they're able to get, and then the few minions that are coming down on the lane. Every time they come out, uh, Salty Potatoes is just there to meet them. The vision control for Salty Potatoes is there in their jungle as well. They have that one scout trap down at the mid. That way they're able to spot out if anybody is moving from the side of Mouse Sports. And they just keep going in and out of the choke point to it. It's a really difficult situation for him. We're coming on 14, we're coming on 14 and a half minutes right now. The Kraken's going to be spawning pretty soon there at the Halcyon well. And uh, it, it could very well be going over to Salty Potatoes if we don't mouse? have a contest. Mouse, Mouse, Bright Bull works down a little bit too early. Blastermer comes through. Here's a potential big fight for Mouse. Let's go. Great Ring Service through with the Fearsome Shade. 
side, disrupting Mouse. The bang rang on the sneaky, sneaky rose defensive over the top side. Divine intervention. It means the Leon's not attacking. He's dead. What can you do? A two versus three for Mouse Sports. And they are falling to the potatoes currently. I'm the Doom left for dead is just man whoop just man to the left salty potatoes into the right looks like he'll be able to recall home the flare spots oh. out but he can't stop the recall and now just man left in a dire situation left in a dire situation and i, I wanted to point out also humanist uh that your good friend ozo actually stole that uh, gold mine but so it minimized oh. the, he did but it minimized their loss however kraken is on the lease for them and uh, salty potatoes is going to be doing some serious work here with those last two turrets on the leash kraken has more hp she is harder to take so mouse sports look at their levels we only have just man at level 10 he's the captain though i'm the dooms at level 11. infusions are popped out we don't have leon with an infusion yet though he he does have the gold to get it, so if he wants to fight right now, that's going to be a little bit of a difference maker in these fights. But he just needs to really time how he's going to be doing his Divine Interventions. Atlas Pauldron comes out for him. That's going to allow him to dive in there, potentially with his Benedictions, if he's not stuffed up. How about right now? They need to dive in right now. Stormguard looking for the stun, but he's stunned up himself. Leon, he jumps in. Will he wind up for the Holy Nova? A nice Blast Tremor comes through. They're on target. Sneaky with the on point. Gets a little bit of a barrier. Rose defensive, some fortified health over the top. Divine Intervention comes out. Leon stays alive. A pretty nice fight here. Breaking point starting to stack. Well, not really that fast. Uh-oh, Leon. And this is not the place you want to be. I'm the Doom goes down. Salty Potatoes doing great work. Kraken pretty much burning through one turret by itself. Looks like Salty Potatoes not going to lose anybody in this fight. Mouse Sports lose two. And this is going to be game one going to Salty Potatoes. Game one going to Salty Potatoes. Salty Potatoes right now. The uh, uh, lower seeded team, number six seed right now in the current standings. Mouse Sports four. And they are just getting stomped upon. The choke point, the stranglehold that they had to deal with sitting there in their choke point of their base was just immense for like half the game. Man, Salty Potatoes looking really good right now. Absolutely unbelievable. Classed 17 assists in a, in a game with 18 kills. This guy was a part of almost everything here. I'm really impressed with his play. This is also... Just seeing them all in the lineup together is, is really great to see, Sean. Yeah, it's really great to see. And that bulwark was just doing so much work there, too. Just like what we talked about. Able to stop Ozo from coming in. Stopping the, the benedictions from landing on them. Uh, from getting that Atlas Pauldron, even though it was picked up late game. Being used upon them in that last team fight. Man, this, this was so good. The Joker had so much damage coming out of those bad mojos. And they were just chunking down health. Sneaky, really good, really strong on this black feather. 13 mm -hmm. kills. Yeah. Incredible game for Sneaky, incredible game for the Salty Potatoes. But to break this one down, Munchables and our analysts. Thank you very much, guys. What a game coming out from Salty Potatoes. I criticized the Weapon Power Grace pick last weekend, or last week, yesterday. No, last it was week. last weekend. Last weekend. It was, it last, was week. last weekend. <laughs> anyway, I criticized the Weapon Power Grace. This is what I was expecting to see. This is why I tweeted about it. Yeah, I mean, the Weapon Power Grace, it it works in some very, very stringent situations. But when you pick it up early, your opponents can just completely build around it. And that's exactly what... I mean, it's not good against Blackfeather. It's not good against the Lyra. And then they just had the Batiste able to just run rampant this game. Snalty Potatoes got themselves an early lead and just pushed that advantage to the limit. Right, I mean, the Grace pick is about getting ahead early on, and they did not get ahead early yeah. on. They actually fell really far behind, and once that happens, it becomes really hard to execute on the Grace carry lane uh, hero. So, for Grace, once she falls behind, I mean, I talked about Mouse Sports. They are, they might be experimenting a little bit too much. They're having too much fun with this new roster with Leon. I mentioned it could backfire. In my mm -hmm. opinion, it just did really backfire hard with that Grace pick. Yeah, I think we just witnessed that before our eyes. We can take a look at some of the early fights. First one at around 7 minutes and 30 seconds into the game. This was an ace that Salty Potatoes got right at the start. Yeah, and Salty Potatoes were already with a you know fairly decent lead. You see 3k gold at 7 minutes. And then... Mouse sports, they go diving underneath this turret, get slowed down and stuck. You, I'm the Doom, he's already almost dead before he's able to get out from underneath turret range. Does get the Divine Intervention, but just not enough healing coming out from 
a especially level seven weapon grace uh, just is you're not going to be saving a target for much longer than a couple of seconds yeah absolutely the, the weapon grace the ultimate is not why you pick up that that lock in anyway but let's take a look at the next couple of double kills that came on through because kind of the mid game was just a series of double kills going the way of salty potatoes right i mean you could see the grace going in with her a and that's what you want to do as a grace carry your only win condition is to go in with your a to try and burst down targets but if you're so far behind so far behind in items that's going to be so hard to execute on which is why once mouse or most salty potatoes got ahead early on mouse sports had nothing really to be able to do the ozo tried to do as much as he could but it just wasn't enough on his own also the way that salty potatoes played around those mid-game team fights was actually incredible because grace wants the team to be grouped up when she goes in they always stayed spread out just a bit and then as soon as Ozo went in, they would group up and put the sigil underneath the entire team. So Ozo, yes, he's getting a lot of acrobounce damage, but it's all getting healed up immediately by this Lyra. So their positioning of being able to expand and kind of collapse as a team as needed based mm -hmm. on what their opponents were doing at the time was really impressive. Yeah, it's really good coordination from the side of Solid Potatoes. This is a team that we've been saying... We want to see bigger things out of. Maybe this is the week for them. They could be looking towards fans. Let's take a look at the last moments of that game as Salty Potatoes managed to win themselves another fight and grab a Kraken off the back of this. They did win this team fight, and this was the last hope team fight for Mouseforce coming in. They tried to initiate Ozo, still doing quite a bit of damage, but it's again not enough since. Grace is really far behind, and if you're not able to burst down targets, especially with a breaking point build, that's not how you want to build Grace, but because he was so far behind, he didn't really have too many options. And I gotta talk about the early game because that really was where everything happened. Batiste and the Joker showed up huge. In my opinion, he single-handedly snowballed the side of uh, Salty Potatoes against Mouseport. There was a play around three minutes where he was able to steal an Elder Tree and away from Ozo, get him down he pushed then into his jungle to get a kill secure his entire backs and then went up to get a gank and first third and that was like a, a 2k gold lead that uh, salty potatoes got in the early four uh, in the first four minutes off of one very impressive rotations for uh, rotation from the joker so he's finding this batiste pick to be a huge pick for him and it's something that they will probably try to prioritize going forward and at the same time that early rotation you're talking about that's something that you know, Mouseport should have been aware of. Like, he, he got the kill. You know they're going to clear out the backs because there's no reason why they wouldn't clear out the backs. And then as a laner, you have to understand the timings in the jungle. You have to be aware that, okay, they just cleared our backs. They're going to be coming from our side of the map now up towards the lane. Like, nobody clears the backs and then just says, okay, let's just go back to our jungle and keep farming. That's not a thing that junglers do. They always will look for a gank if they get that early advantage, and Mouseport just didn't respect that. You've got to try and deny those opportunities as you move on with the series. Let's take a look at the damage done during that game, and I expect huge numbers from this side of Salty oh. Potatoes here. Sneaky on 40,000 damage, 30,000 for the Joker as well. And you can see almost double when it comes to those lanes. Right, I mean, this is total damage done rather than the damage per minute that yep. we had yesterday. And it's just huge. The black for the versus the Grace. If Grace had gotten ahead early on, you would almost see the opposite of what we're seeing right now just because of how much burst she is able to uh, apply with her yep. A initiations. But if she falls behind, the pick is not a great pick and that's why you don't see it often. It's, it's something very, very risky. And a similar situation with Ozo as well, right? You've got to be ahead so you can be tanky enough to sustain during these fights. It's great if you can heal yourself up, but if you don't, if you can't soak up enough damage to get that healing out, then then you're a useless pick in the end. So let's start to talk about this next draft coming into game number two of this semi-final. Are we expecting Mouse to change things? We're talking about how they're playing this for fun right now. They're swapping roles. They're swapping picks. This is now crunch time. They still have a shot at Worlds. They've got yes. to win these semifinals. I mean, though. this season is so important. I understand it's a new roster and you're very close friends. You like playing with one another. You're trying to have fun with it. You have to respect oh. the fact that World Spot is on the line, though. So a little bit more of a serious draft coming in as we already see the Rhyme first pick yeah. for Amda Doom. And we know how incredible he does on it usually. Yeah, typically, if I were to just see, you know, Mouse Sports get Rhyme. I'm willing to say this game's already over. Mouseports is going to win this, but they need to play a bit cleaner than we have seen in their last, you know, three to four games. They haven't looked as dominant. Right. They haven't looked as you know, strong as we normally see them. But hopefully that game was a wake-up call and they do kind of 
you know, come in a lot stronger this time around. And they have that comfort pick. They have that incredibly strong meta pick. I'm almost a little bit upset in Salty Potatoes that they didn't go ahead and leave the Black Feather open as well mm -hmm. and just trade the Rhyme for the Black Feather because it was almost a guarantee that Mouse Sports would take the Rhyme if it was available. So I really like Salty Potatoes draft so far. The Kestrel pick into the Arden ban, and they're going to pick the Lyra if Mouse Sports don't ban her here, or if they do, they might go for the Catherine. But the Kestrel ban, uh, pick is something that I want to talk about because Salty Potatoes, all of a sudden, this meta and this update actually favors them incredibly heavily just because Sneaky's top two heroes are the Black Feather and the Kestrel, and both of them are the top two heroes in lane right now, and then followed by Vox, who Sneaky plays also very well. So all of a sudden, this meta really, really favors Salty Potatoes, and it could be a reason to why we see them winning the series right here. So Lyra going to be locked in here for Salty Potatoes alongside that Kestrel. We'll see how Mouse Sports are going to respond. They've got that rhyme for I'm the Doom already. We'll see where they want to go with Leon and Justman. Arden taken away from Justman. That's something we know that he's an exceptionally accomplished captain with. But things like Lance, things like the Churnwalker, still available. Yeah, still plenty of options. Could also go for the Finn is something yep. that we've seen Justman play a lot. And so... Uh, with the Vox picked up there, again, that's just because it is one of the stronger laners. They are going to go for the Grace, this time playing it as a captain, though. So, you know, should have... You say that. It's, <laughs> it is going to be Captain gonna Vox. Be captain. I would... No, that's not this, going to I am, of course, this joking. Would I am be of course where, joking. This would be where the draft really can pull through for Salty Potatoes all fall apart. The jungle pick here is very important because Kestron and Lyra... So far, draft, Salty Potatoes draft is extremely smart like we said they banned the Arden they got the Catherine they also forced Mouse Sports forced Mouse Sports to ban the Catherine away so now they had to go for a Grace who in my opinion in 2.9 is a second tier captain uh, hero now the question is will they have a jungler who can defend against the Rhyme and not get snowballed by him because I'm the Doom can still carry this game for Mouse Sports very easily off of really strong invades and look at this siege composition coming out from Salty Potatoes this is the kind of original Siege composition that we started to see like last season towards the end of the season. So excited to see how this one pans out. What are the map movements going to look like coming into this one with a Siege composition going up against a composition with a Grace Captain? The Mouse Sports is going to have to be very aggressive with this Rhyme. They're going to have to try and really abuse the fact that Rhyme can take camps over the Samuel. Samuel doesn't have a great clear speed until he hits level two. So that's going to be a key focus is going to be this jungle matchup again because if Samuel is able to get to level 2 and 3 and get those first items rolling and they can start pressuring the lane, there's not much available to the side of Mouse Sports to answer that. Yeah, it's all going to be about the early aggression and mm -hmm. the pressure that Mouse Sports is going to be able to put out. If they don't snowball the game with the Rhyme, it's going to be extremely hard for them going into the late game with the triple range versus the Rhyme and the Vox. I got to mention though, you talked about the movements. If Samuel gets up to lane before Rhyme invades, then it's going to be hard for them. All right, we've got to get on into this one. Hashtag Banglory8 on Twitter. Let us know who you think is taking this series. Can Salty Potatoes finish this one off? It's time to pass it over to Sean Humanisto to find out. Thank you very much, Munchbulls. And uh, he is so right. After a brief game one, we're into game two here between Mouse Sports and Salty Potatoes. Let's see if Mouse can make a comeback here, Sean. Yeah, let's see if they can. Uh, I am liking, liking what I'm seeing out of Salty Potatoes, though. The Siege composition is pretty damn strong with uh, Kestrel, but we do have a little bit of a jungle jungle poke there with uh, just man on that grace kestrel she she hasn't been touched uh the past uh, couple of updates even including the hot fix actually so she's still pretty good when it comes to her damage output rhyme on the other hand uh he did get nerfed a little bit he's still strong but uh, his cp ratio went down for his winter spire attacks so uh, he, he's still something to watch out for we do need to have him get his boots very very quickly and i mean journey boots so once he gets his first tier three cp item once he gets his journey boots, he's going to be even more of a threat, and he's going to be able to engage and disengage from fights really quickly after he gets some of his attack off. Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting, though. I mean, he doesn't have any sort of app-closing ability. I'm just curious, like, how is it going to work out when the siege composition of Salty Potatoes starts to kind of bear down upon, upon Mouse Sports? Well, it's going to be really tough, but I, I would expect actually Just Man to be coming in with a lot of those ben benedictions. Go ahead and slow down the enemies too, and provide a holy shield. For that gives Rhyme more time to be able to come in with that directional holy shield, and then he, so we could journey boots in, chill the target, give them a little bit of a root with that chill winds, mm -hmm. do some damage, back out. 
Yeah, so it's gonna, it seems like it's going to be super important also for Salty Potatoes to have a nice reflex block for, for whoever is going to be attempting to be kind of on the front line, which you imagine would be Class sitting there with a, a bright bulwark, uh, throw, throwing a sigil for his team. Of course, it, you really don't want the Samuel or the Kestrel getting caught at all. No, you definitely don't want them getting caught out. We, we have Joker already at level 3, so he's going to be able to have those Empowered Mouse and Veridix with his Drifting Dark as well. And you can already see here, they have that uh, Siege Composition doing some chip damage right on this turret. Lane. Winter Spires, I'm the Doom, moves in. He has to do damage to be tanky. Um, but he does alright right there. Stops it enough for Leon to get at least a couple of the last hits and stops the Siege. Yes, Siege just stopped and Check this out, we actually do have that Reflex block coming out from class and he has the dragon's heart as well that's going to allow him it looks like he's building towards a crucible so that's going to allow him to have that block available for his team he's also going to be able to do more heal ratio and it looks like they're getting poked out here in the jungle yeah joker forced to use his boots as i'm the doom grab the elder trant and apply damage now doom grabs the mid as more region moving forward he's going to look to take the backs here joker grabs his own back trance and maybe we have a skirmish. Doom is in a great place. Benediction Ford, he's going to use his own boots, looking to get the chill ones onto Joker. The roots there, sigil down over the top. He's going to get the movements below them. But holy Nova, knocks him up in the air. Leon drops down from the lane. Who's going to go down here? I, I can't believe they let... Okay, well, they just let Joker go because, of course, he was running away from his team. They split him apart. They chop him down. First blood to mouse. Yeah, first Blood to Mouse, that's going over to Leon there. Really good for it to be going over to one of the carries, of course. They need that extra gold. As we know, for Vox, he actually is one of those heroes that needs a lot of weapon itemization to be able to hit his really good power spikes. So mm -hmm. once he's able to get those solid weapons in there, those tier 3 items, then he's going to be able to do a lot more damage. It looks like he's building towards a poison ship. He's got that Bar Beetle Swift Shooter in tow in his pocket. Uh, we do see Sneaky across the lane with uh, Heavy Steel and uh, Six Sins. Looks like he's gonna be working towards a Sorrow Blade as well to get that flat burst damage coming out of Kestrel, this weapon-powered Kestrel here. Look at uh, Joker in the jungle there. He actually also has that uh, Eclipse Prism, Heavy Prism, working towards, uh, he could be working towards a number of things, but uh, I would expect him to maybe work towards Shatter Glass there. Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting uh, in the new update. We'll see. Um, obviously, there's a couple different routes you could go. He, he could also work towards the Dragon's Eye. The Dragon's mm -hmm. Eye is actually probably a better choice. You get a lot more bang for your buck there yeah. once you get a Dragon's Eye. And if he's as long as he's continuously damaging enemies, he's going to be able to ramp up the stacks on Damage Eye. Uh, it could be auto attack damage, could be ability damage. Damage Eye. Yeah, damage yeah, Eye. For Samuel, it's pretty easy to be stacking it up. Yeah, all you have to do is just throw out your uh, Malice and Verdicts, throw out your auto attacks. Drifting Dark gives you a lot of range potential, and uh, I, I would expect to see him just doing a lot of damage. He could ramp up to 265 CP uh, for for his kit and just continue to output damage in these fights, as opposed to the Shatter Glass, which would just give him the flat 150 CP. Yeah, it's it's really interesting to see the builds. I think we've seen that into Eve of Harvest. Uh, a couple players going that recently. Some people switching it up there. Now, Leon taking huge burst damage. A couple Glimmer shots coming through. Landing from Sneaky, but Doom quickly running up into the lane as a, a hero for his laner. But this kind of dissuades a bit of the aggression. Mouse are clumped up here. Crucible's out for class. That's going to force, actually, the Fountain out of Mouse Force. Benediction in here. Mouse Force not taking the bait, walking into that active camo. There's the Crucible, a nice job to block off the Valkyrie. Now Just Man, the damage starting to stack up here. They use two healing flasks. Doom moves forward. He gets the chill wins. Class, he's not too tanky, but they avoid that Holy Nova. Nice oblivion putting Just Man to sleep. Benediction forward, but I am the Doom will take the kills. Class goes down. A glimmer shot finds one. Just Man falling. This is a nice trade here, and the lane one shot. Oh. One huge chunk of damage coming out there. Whoa! Oh. Little Sonic Zoom! Leon! Self-proclaimed best player in the world, finding an easy kill there. Sneaky dude, if Sneaky moves forward with like one, two glimmer shots, he could easily find a kill here. You guys are playing with fire. They are playing with a very dangerous situation here, Humanist. That uh, turret is down to about third quarter of health. Leon, he's sticking out there. He just wants to be able to defend that turret. Looks like he's going to be rotating down, getting a little bit of farm there. But uh, Just Man poking out in the bush here. Oh, things are looking good for Mouse Sports this game. They're, they're a little bit on the front foot here. 
getting some trades with their damage. Fountain is a very interesting item this update. It did get its cooldown actually reduced a little bit as opposed to the previous update, so it's easier for it to be used consistently. Uh, but uh, we don't have a Fountain out yet for class, but it, he doesn't really need it at this point because he does have that Imperial Sigil, which is up a lot quicker, and he already has his base health pretty high with that Crucible as well. So that gives him a lot of that, uh, that ratio healing that he needs coming out from that Sigil. Well, looking on the, the flip side, Doom's got his Shatter Glass complete. Valkyrie is ready to be used, and they're going to move right out here. Trying to get a jump on the Sneaky. It's not going to happen. They're still holding their ultimates. Just Man, not quite level 6. He's about to reach that. I think once they get that Divine Intervention, it'd be a nice power spike for them, yeah? Yeah, that's going to be a really good power spike. He, not only will he have Fountain available, which you, typically you use Fountain first because it gives that uh, that slower over time healing about a few seconds. Then we actually have his Divine Intervention, which could be used. Uh, looks like there's a Doom's, here. Doom's soloing in the jungle. Well, I can't believe it. Mouse baiting Salty Potatoes in the lane. Doom gets a free Crystal Sentry. Really nice plays. Okay, now moving forward. He gets the chill wins here. Huge damage as Sneaky gets burst down there. Big, big plays coming out of Mouse Sports as they pretty much set that play up in advance there and executed cleanly. Good rotation down into the jungle, but they're not done yet. No, they're not done yet. Surprisingly not done yet. The Joker with the Dragon's Eye gets the Corrupted Genius kill. Oh, that always feels good. A Holy Nova from Justman trying to oh. buy some time. One shot and a little poke from the Joke. And they're going to find another kill there. Four to three for Salty Potatoes. Well, three to four. <laughs> Eight and a half minutes in. Wow, the journey boots coming out for Rhyme here. Uh, Leon, he's uh, doing a little damage. This is my turret, and it will not go down easily. The Joker stacking up the Dragon's Eye turrets down. He gets one more. Leon goes down there. How long for that one shot? You're not a CP Kestrel. Too long. Uh, that rotation that we saw in the last couple of minutes with uh, I'm the Doom going down there, stealing away that uh, Crystal Sentry, taking out one of its lives, was very interesting. And it was an interesting dynamic to have Salty Potatoes try to go down, but they were actually forced back up near their turret because the rest of Mouse Sports was just there. However, the turret doesn't go down in that siege uh, for Salty Potatoes. And then we have them get a good trade off of the other turret of Mouse Sports, the first tier one, for the tier one turret. Uh, Eve of Harvest picked up by uh, the Joker, and that's going to allow him for a pretty good power spike and sustain here. All right, well, Vision's going to be the name of the game. I mean, your range doesn't mean too much if a mouse can just kind of hang out in a brush, forcing you to make movements across the map. There are some nice scout traps down for Salty Potatoes through the jungle. But constantly up in the lane, you do see them getting caught by surprise. Yeah, uh, that flare did come out, so... Mouse Sports does know that those scout traps are there. They're just going to have to pop those at some point. But it gives them a, an idea of how much vision is down. And there's an engage. Just man, nice little benediction. Beats out that bright bulwark. Now, Mouse, what's the play? They're going to look to drop to the jungle. They find no mid treant, but what do they have? A Crystal Sentry, a delicious Crystal Sentry, of which uh, Leon's going to go ahead and just recall home, get back into the lane because he realizes Salty Potatoes are going to look to try and shove this out as quickly as possible. They've reached the turret. Look at the, oh, Weapon Gessel chunking through. 398 damage coming through on some of those Glimmer shots, and that's going to be a free turret. Well, not free turret. Traded for the Crystal Sentry here, and it'd be nice if the Potatoes could get out of this clean. Looks like they will. Nope. That's the journey boots. Valkyrie comes down. Ah, Crucible is there, but it was off the mark anyway. Salty Potatoes, get away. Yeah, they get away, Humanist. And uh, that that is the name of the game so far. We're having this Crystal Sentry prioritized by Mouse Sports, which I don't know is the best move right now because the name of the game is Turrets. The turrets are up. They need to push those to get into the base, shatter the Vein Crystal. And there's an engage here. Looks like Just Man's going, getting a little chunk damage, but they're backing off. So... Sneaky. Tyrant's monocle on him. He's, he's doing a lot of damage, as you can see. Eve of Harvest and Dragon's Eye. Joker is ramping up so much during these team fights, and they're able to just continually chunk down these turrets over and over again. Yeah, it's a delicious thing right now, and the Joker, he has just been doing work this game. I mean, this Samuel looks really good. I love this build. He's, he's here with a great timing. He has incredible impact in the game. One of the things is when when the bright bulwark goes down, and then he can just throw an oblivion. It, it sets them up like really nicely for that, and it forces Mouse to really respect that as they look to engage. Uh, not only do, does Mouse really respect that, but also 
Salty Potatoes is really respecting the churny boots on I'm the Doom. Whenever he boots in, we actually also see the boots pop for uh, class. He's sitting on war treads there, so he's able to get his team away to safety. Another Tyrant's Monocle picked up by Sneaky. His glimmer shots and auto attacks are going to be hitting like a truck's. All right, well, let's see. He's got to be there to hit like a truck. Wait for it. Comes down right over the top side. I'm the Doom dropping low. Joker as well. Leon trying to find a target here. Who's it going to be? A nice active camel. War Treads activated. Salty Potatoes looking to regoose. They've got I'm the Doom. The turret aggro was there. Mouse Sports are going to tuck tail and run. One shot comes through. Justman able to soak up that damage pretty easily. But the Joker is here. He's got a Malice, but not the Verdict. Corrupted Genius is going to proc. Drifting Dark ready to go. Oh, he's not able to steal that mid away. Feels bad, man. Malice and Verdict from downtown range. And they're just going to pull up here. Maybe stop for the Crystal Century. No. Oh, the top side. Sneaky. He's so sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky. And they're just going to shove the lane forward. They can take Crystal Century Gold Mine or whatever they want. Sneaky had a really good flank there, Humanist, and they were being chased through the jungle. A sneaky knew his, his vision from his comrades, gave him the look, and they were able to see. Unfortunately, they weren't able to take the Crystal Sentry in return. That would have been nice, but uh, taking one of Mouse Sports members was actually a pretty good move for them. They are men's gold payout going over to Salty Potatoes. They're a little bit in the lead right now when it comes to net worth. They're actually up about two and a half thousand. Four to five right now with only three turrets remaining for Mouse Sports. If you are a uh, side of Salty Potatoes right now, playing on the front foot with the momentum from the previous game, and there's momentum in this game as well, they're, they've got to be feeling pretty good. No, they, I'm sure they're feeling good right now. Sneaky has come alive. I mean, this is when you get these three items right here, Weapon Kestrel is really chunking through health bars, and it doesn't really matter. I mean, to a certain degree it matters, but not so much. I'm the Doom. He is a tanky hero, but not too tanky against this uh, Weapon Kestrel build right now. And we don't see Rhymes always go for the Journey Boots. Is it just the fact that he's up against the Siege Comp, the reason he had to go for those this early in this game? It could well be that that's the reason he wants to be able to get to the back line in order to, u to use his auto attacks, use his Winter Spires. Uh, he needs to get damage down, and that's where. And you don't want to just fight the the front line captain here. You have to be able to get damage down on who it matters for. If you're able to take down Joker, take down Sneaky, those are targets that are doing a lot of damage output. So as I'm the Doom, you've got to be able to run in there with the Journey Boots, and and he prioritized that pretty well. Unfortunately, uh, Sneaky and the Joker are just able to reposition so well, especially with Joker with his Drifting Dark, he's able to get that movement speed buff, mm -hmm. move, kite around the fight. Same thing with Sneaky, he's able to go into active camo as long he has, as he has not gotten too much damage upon him. Weapon Infusion actually picked up by Sneaky, that's going to allow him to, to hit more like a, an atomic bomb now as opposed to a truck. Ooh, that's not very nice. He also One has thing, a Sean, bone saw as well. To, to your point about Sneaky being very elusive, I wanted to just point out that Justman, he's got a flare gun and a full stack of flares as well. So he realized this is it's super important to keep that vision down. Doesn't matter if you active camo, as long as you have flares down across that area where they're fighting. Yeah, he, he's probably going for, he is going for a, a contraption there. Unfortunately, he's a li he's got a lot of gold to go. He needs to get uh, about 800 more gold for that. Um, but uh, yeah, he is prior prioritizing vision right now. Kraken is on the board. Contraption actually picked up first by uh, class on this Lyra. So they're playing the vision game. Super important right now for them to be able to control the mid area of this map where the Kraken has spawned. And uh, yeah, this is going to be wh whoever wins this next team fight is going to be able to take Kraken. Who do you think is going to win the next team fight? <laughs> I feel like the way things are going right now, it's going to be Salty Potatoes, Humanist. Oh, hashtag bias cast to Sean Austin. I never would have said it myself. War Trend, Salty Potatoes look to disengage. Valkyrie off the mark. Oh, no. Sneaky's blowing Doom up. Benediction in from Just Man. Wait for it from Leon, buying a little bit of time. But they, oh, they stopped up. They walked right into the end. Yeah, that was not what they were expecting. Salty Potatoes on the chase. Arcane Passage up in the lane while Sneaky and Joker chase Leon through the jungle. Doom just kind of getting trolled out by class there, but this is Leon looking to buy some time. He'll go with a little wall jump there. Can he recall? No! <laughs> Leon, another wall jump. Zip, zip, zigzag. Whoop, whoop. Sneaky, oh. 504 damage. He'll go down. Crystal Sneaky Sentry finds the Crystal Sentry. Last hit as well. A little bit of extra gold in their pocket. I'm the Doom. Last man standing for Mouse Sports. And of course, as you said, Kraken is available.
Kraken is available and it's going to be easily taken by them. Leon, because he was able to run away and juke for so long, staggered death timers. You never want to have staggered death timers, especially when the Kraken's up. Kraken is unleashed and on the leash for Salty Potatoes. I'm the Doom and Jess Man are available and uh, four seconds, Leon's going to be out too. This is looking pretty grim if you're Mouse Sports. Looking pretty dang good if you were Salty Potatoes, my friend. Salty potatoes. Salty potatoes are delicious. I like them fried. I like a good baked potato. You know, so many different ways that a potato can be delicious as long as it's salty. These guys coming through here today. This is also a team that has just failed to have, you know, continuous wins in a row. They look so strong here. I'm excited for them as a team as the Kraken bears down upon this choke point turret. Malice know they need to make play, play Benediction in Boots activated. They're trying to get on a sneaky. Can't do it. Valkyrie blocked off. Sonic Zoom forward. Bright Borg trying to delay Mouse Sports. Just Man stunned up. But the chase is on. Sonic Zoom sneaky taking a whole bunch of damage. I'm the Doom though. He has to turn and run. He gets bursted down. They can't kite too well with the rhyme. Just Man goes down to sneaky. 9 to 4 advantage. Leon, eh, he's a pretty good player. But I don't see him defending here, Sean. No, I don't see him doing that much, Humanist, and he he's get, he has no energy. He's not going to be able to Sonic Zoom enough. 492, 504 damage. Oh, my goodness. Oh! Last! Oh, got him! Classed with a style point kill at the end. Just a wonderful play, wonderful game, wonderful series. Uh, what? All, all together for this one. What an amazing series, Humanist, to have the six seed team go up against the number four seed team and not only that but we've seen leon doing astounding things on mouse sports to see salty potatoes now we might as well call them spicy meatballs these guys are amazing <laughs> do doing so much work here and finishing out these games so cleanly really well done from them and i'm excited to see them in the finals yeah it's uh it's very exciting stuff it's it's kind of weird uh sometimes with these these eu teams like, they just play amazingly sometimes like fanatic yesterday looked absolutely out of their mind so i'm really excited to see what they do later up against uh g2 but here in this in this series uh beautiful beautiful play sneaky getting the heroes he loves and to break this one down we have our analysts and much more you're getting a little bit ahead of yourself there, Humanist. G2 haven't made it through the semi-finals just yet. Fnatic 